Hi everyone, I'm Glenn Southern, and if you followed this channel for any time, you will have seen me printing things like this guy here on my Piopoli Phenom, which is uh, my largest 3D printer. Uh, it's a Chinese brand large format a resin printer. Now, when you have these printers, they have a tray, and in the bottom of that tray is a clear plastic sheet called a FEP, and that's a fluorinated ethylene propylene, which is a hard thing to say. Basically a clear sheet that the light shines through. We'll talk more about it in other videos, but basically sometimes that gets damaged and we have to change that. So this video is all about changing that FEP. Um, and it's specifically for this machine, but you may want to have a look at it if you've got any of this kind of printer. So what we'll do is we'll take the tray with the drum-like FEP that's badly damaged, although not ripped in this case. And what we'll do is I'll show you how I replace it um, and then we'll, uh, we'll end up with something that looks exactly like this and sounds exactly like this, um, but is cleaner and without all of these scratches and damages on it. So um, you don't need many things at all. So you need um, a roll of this, which is uh, a little bit dusty actually, mine, but this is, this is a roll of FEP that um, I've had ready to um, use for this job. So it's clean mostly um, and not damaged. And you need um, these things. So you need Allen keys. Um, and if you look on the back of the tray here, um, maybe you can see a bit better in that camera. There's basically just a set of um, screws um, and you need an Allen key just to undo them. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to literally work through them. Um, it'll be a time lapse for this next two or three seconds, but I'm just literally going to crack them because they're a bit tight at first and, and then I'm just going to undo each one. So just bear with me for a few seconds while I undo all of these, as I say. Um, this should be time lapsing now. So what I generally do is as I undo them, I'll lay them down on the side. Um, not that that matters that much with this. It's not like doing a, a car part, um, but I, I generally like to lay them in the order that they come out. Um, but again, not particularly uh, a major issue if you don't do that. I've probably done this about three or four times since I've had the machine. So it's not something that needs doing. And I've had this for a few years now. Uh, it's been my main machine for the longest time. I absolutely love this machine. I started off with um, a slightly different type of machine um, called a Form 2, um, but this is different technology now. Okay, so next thing to do is just literally lift this why this uh, frame out so i am going to lift it and show you so it's just an aluminium frame um with countersunk tops like that and then you just literally put that on one side because you're going to need that in a few minutes um, if you're doing an old one like i am here um, you, and you haven't fully cleaned it you might want to use gloves because there is a bit of resin on them still um, and it can be a bit nasty uh, if you're not careful now, uh, if you look here carefully, you can see that the, the FEP is actually pushed into the shape of this frame. So if I pull it out slowly and then hold it closer for you, you can see it looks like it's a, a molded piece, but it's not. It comes flat and when you have, have put it in, it, it forms to that shape. So the good thing about FEP is it actually molds to a shape. So it is flexible like this. Um, and it does look like a printed single piece, but that's obviously not what we start with. So put that on one side. And then it's a good idea just, just to be sure, just to give everything a little bit of a clean around the edges here, just to make sure there's no, um, well, there is definitely gonna be, if this is an old one, there's gonna be leaked um, resin around the edges, which may leak back under this, this edge. So make sure you fully clean it. And if you have a really, if it's really bad, then get some um, isopropanol uh, and give it a really good clean, or even even you know a, like a, um, uh, like a wipe with uh, alcohol on it um, if needed. But it needs to be grease grease free and completely clean if you can. 
and definitely make sure there's no bits falling into it like this because that will cause a problem. So just a couple of minutes just to make sure it's clean will stand you in good stead later down the line. Like so you can see the bits of grey on there as well. And again, that's why you should really be doing this with gloves on if, you, if it's an old one. Um, it's definitely w worth wearing your set of gloves. So the next thing to do is take the, take the roll of FEP and lay it out across the, um, the tray. And obviously it's going to be loose and floppy, but make sure it extends fully over every edge like that. And then what you want to do is just place the tray, um, the, the, the aluminium edge, and then pull it tight as you can. You can hear that there's a bit of tension there already. So that means you're well on the, the, the right track. And then what you've got to do is you've got to then start um, uh, fastening the screws back in in a very careful sequence so that, that, that you don't have any kind of flexibility or have it loose at all in the in the um, uh, in any of the edges it has to be taut and it has to be drum like or this won't work because the idea is that the you know it has to not, not none of the resin has to stick to it so it can't have any flexibility other than it's you know the flexibility that's innate with the the fep that sounds a bit complex but it's not it's just make it tight like a drum is what we're trying to do so what you might want to do is at this point is just pick a few areas and just start working with them. So what I'm going to do is take a cocktail stick and I'm literally going to say, right, I'm going to start in this corner here and I'm just going to pop a hole down through it like that. And then for the very first one, I'm just going to pop one in like that. So I'm going to pop it in like so and you'll see it go through like that. Takes a minute just to push it through. But then what you don't do is tighten it any more than that. It just has to bite because we have to make sure that this is fully tight across all the corners. So what we're gonna do is just do a couple of corners. So we'll do that one. And then we're gonna pull it diagonally across here, tight, and then push that down and then put another hole in it. Just make. Make sure you feel that it's tight across the, those diagonal corners, nice and tight. And then pop a hole, pop your next screw in like so. And while you're holding it really firmly, then pop that in. Okay, so we've got it tight across these two corners here. So that's a good start. So it's, t it's getting tight, but it's not, it's nowhere near where we want it to be yet. So then we do the opposite two corners like this. So I'm gonna pull this one tight. I'm gonna pop a hole in it. Then pop the screw in, holding it tight all the time. And then tighten that down. But again, not super tight. You can see it pulling the corners here as, as you're tightening it. And it's super loose here and here but we're already getting that drum feel. And now a really important one is this opposite corner here. So this one needs to really make it drum-like now. So I'm gonna pop that one in, make sure it's really, really tight when you do this one. Pop that in like so. Again, not too tight. Now, if there's any flex in it at all, now you need to make sure, well, you, you, in fact, there, if there's any flex at all in this bit, you need to stop because that means it hasn't worked. So it has to be just with them four, it has to be no twist in it. No, there's a little bit of twist there, you can see, but I'm gonna fix that by pulling it out. But there has to be nothing that will end up with a ripple. It has to be completely flat and completely taut. So we're in a good place already now, so it, fe it feels good already. So now I'm gonna go left and right with it, or sorry, top and bottom. And I'm gonna pull that, and just wipe my hands because they're a little bit greasy there. I'm gonna pull it taut there. I'm gonna get the cocktail stick, pop it through, and then pop one in. And then tighten that down. And then 
same on the opposite side again. Keep picking the wrong screws up. As I said, I, I do lay them out, but I've never had an issue where the screws didn't fit in any of the holes. So they're, they're very, very well made uh, parts. So they haven't been a problem for me. Um, so you can see now, it feels like it's already like a drum. So I'm gonna now do here and here next. So I'm gonna pull this side super tight. You can actually, I don't know whether you can hear it on the camera, on the audio, but I'm actually getting an echo now. And that's because it's giving me like a drum-like echo, which means you've definitely got something drum-like going on. So that means you've definitely got it right if you're getting that. So do this next one now, pull this one tight. Super tight. Now, the very fact that you're pressing this down into this um, the countersunk edge means that it will all get tighter and stretched anyway. So if you've done it right to this point, it can only get better. If you're not right now, and if it doesn't feel like a drum now, it's not going to improve. So if, that, if, it, if you haven't got it tight now, stop, and you're going to need another one. Um, so now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to keep working my way around I'm going to do like one more in each side, which I'll just do while the camera's still running. So pull it tight, pull, pop it in. And then the opposite of that. Right. Pull, pop it in. Trying to tighten up with a with a cocktail stick there <laughs> doesn't really work, does it? So that one's tight, and then back to these sides. Hopefully now you can you can definitely hear the echo now, which means you're definitely getting a a drum like effect. That one's good, feels tight there. Now this other corner, I'm pretty much there. Then, if I'm honest with you, um, you can actually let me just see if. This will go through, yeah. So now they will go through without the cocktail stick. Um, because it's taut and there's no issues, you should be able to just pop it in and it'll go in like that. Just always be pulling when you're doing that initial one in, like so. And then double check it. Absolutely fine. So we'll start pulling and doing the final ones. So, and then this top corner is the last worrying area. And that's that done. And again, that should now be done. So I'm now gonna quickly time-lapse these last few going in. And that means you don't have to sit here and watch me screwing screws in. So I'll make sure we've got one in every hole now. And then I'll go and tighten each one up. And then we'll have a little chat about that. Okay, so they're all in now and there's a screw in every one. Now, if you now go and do the final tightening with, with this, you'll see that it actually pulls the edges tighter. So if I now do this corner, what happens is you, you won't be able to see it because my hand's in the way, but you'll you'll see it actually crinkling there. Hopefully you can see that. I'll do one close up to the camera, I think, and then you can see it. So let me just show you this. So if I take this one here and I tighten it up, hopefully you can see it pulling. See how tight it goes there? See how the plastic is, is bending a little bit there? And what that means is it's really, really pulling it tight now, um, which is exactly what we want. So each time we now do one of these, it's gonna tighten it 
around this edge and pull it down really, really tight, which means it'll definitely be working. And this, this drum sound will get even better. One thing to be careful is do not accidentally stick a cocktail stick or a, um, a the Allen key through your FEP now. You've got to be super careful or, or obviously this is ruined. If you get any kind of a hole in this, it's ruined. So now tighten it down to its final tight level but don't do it all on on um, in a, in a, don't go round in a circle. Do it carefully, uh, corner like so. One corner, then the other corner, then one edge, then the top edge, and do it bit by bit so that it evenly distributes the pull um, as as you're doing it. And then just make sure that everything is is super tight and go go around one after another. So there you go, you now should have a drum-like um, tray and it's got it all in um, and it's all tight and drum-like all around. Now the one thing you've got left to do now is to trim the edges and this is where you can really screw it up. So be careful, really, really careful with your knife. Just make sure you don't slip and go onto this. Um, and what you want to do now is place it in this edge and slowly pull it along here. I always have my finger so it can't really slip. So my finger's right next to it, um, which stops it going in. And then hopefully with a couple of scores, you should be able to remove that excess. So it takes a little bit, especially with a bluntish kind of knife. Like so. And just pull that off again. I'll time lapse it here now. Remember one tiny slip here, or dropping the knife, or anything like that, and you could put a hole through your fat. And that means starting all over again and the expense of another sheet. So um, just take your time. There's no rush with this bit, just do it as an you know, just relax into it. And there you go, that's the complete edge trimmed, everything tightened down, the drum acting like a drum, and ready to go back on the Piopoli Phenom. Now, one thing we want to do is, we don't wanna just put this straight back, what we wanna do is head over and just test this. So, bring it over to a clean surface, um, a bright, clean tissue underneath it, or a piece of uh, kitchen towel underneath it, and then get yourself some resin and um, just pour a tiny, tiny bit in, just enough so that it covers the entire base. Um, if I just do it, there's only a bit in this pot, so it's not too bad, like so. And then just leave that to sit. And then because it's on clean tissue, you should be able to see if there were any leaks or if you've got any holes in the FEP. So just let it sit, let it go for half an hour, and then just lift it up and see if there's any anything leaked out. And if it's not, then it means you're good to go and you can go back into your machine. Thank you so much for watching the video. And if you do like it, please give us a thumbs up because it does help us to get in front of other people who might like this kind of content. And if you like the video, why not subscribe to the channel and then we can let you know when we're uploading new content. We do a wide range of courses that suit the beginner all the way up to advanced. So take a look at the links in the description and you can see what we've got on offer.